Hello everybody, I'm Laura and I'm back in the Sugar and Crumbs kitchen um, tonight to show you how to do two recipes using the Whipping It Up which is our new product. So we'll just give it a couple of minutes while people are joining with us. So have we, have we got anybody with us at the moment Simon? I'm not looking, I'm, I'm letting, uh, <laughs> right. letting Holly do that yes, job tonight. So, um, I'll just introduce who's in the kitchen with me. So we've got Carol in the kitchen. Hi! We've got Simon on camera and then Holly is back as well doing comments. Hi! <laughs> She's out with you tonight so that you can't see. I think last time we came she was a bit nervous because she was there and you, she knew that she, you had her um, eyes on her. <laughs> and yeah, Holly. Have you gone shy, Holly? Yeah, yeah. just a bit nervous. <laughs> so, um, have we got a few people joining us now, Holly? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, how many eyes on us, people. as she says. <laughs> a lot of people. So, hello again and welcome to the Sugar and Crumbs Kitchen. So, as I was saying, I'm back tonight in the Sugar and, Crips, Sugar and Crumbs Kitchen making two recipes using the new Whipping It Up. Now, if you haven't already heard of the Whipping It Up, it's a new product that we've launched, how many weeks is it now? Mm, we're in our third week. The three weeks. So, three weeks. So. Um, as with any of the products that we use at Sugar and Crumbs, we like to show you as many recipes and, and as many different ways as you can use the products so that they're all tried and tested. You can go onto our recipe site, which is on the back of all our packaging, somewhere here. Mm. So it's www.sugarandcrumbsmixingitup.co.uk or .com. Yeah. Both take you there. Um, and the recipes are on there. So. To be fair, if they want to do any of the whipping it up recipes, if they go to the recipe website and in the search engine just write whipping it up, it'll bring up all the recipes related. There's no images yet because I'm waiting for the lovely Simon to edit them for me. <laughs> what? Exactly. Yes, sir. <laughs> you haven't even told me about them. I sent them. you the other day. <laughs> what? The images I sent you the other day, they're on the other computer. So, oh, right. while, yes. they're, while they're carrying yeah. on oh, with right. that. <laughs> we'll go back to the product. So the product is Whipping It Up and it is used to make many different things. As with most of our icing sugars, it's white in colour. It's a convenient product, so it contains egg whites and um, sugar and you can make all different things like your Swiss meringue buttercream, your pavlovas, your mousse, um, royal icing and the two recipes that we're going to do tonight. So. One of the great things about it is that when you're using the whipping up, you don't need to use fresh eggs. So you've not got to worry about having eggs in, whether they're fresh, you've not got any waste because you're not just using the egg white and putting the yolk aside, you're just using the product as it is. So less waste, more convenient. And if um, it tastes just as good in the recipes, if not better, um, as it is, so yeah. it's a good product. It is. <laughs> and lots of people are watching, Laura. Lots of people Good. like the Hello, Whipping Up product. Lots of people like the Whipping Up product. Just to let you know, we have sold out of Velvet Vanilla three times now, and we have made a lot of Velvet Vanilla Whipping It Up. <laughs> there won't be any more made till next Wednesday, um, but we have got all the other five flavours in, so don't panic, um, but we're, we're just fitting it in on the production. We're also having it all rebranded as well, so um, the last of this product is coming through has got this branding on, but we've got some beautiful branding which I shared on the page and you all seem to like it. Um, Jackie Adams says the mousse is amazing, which it is, the mousse is gorgeous. And you're going to, what have you made with it so far, Laura? You've made? So I've, I've made a few different things. So I've made, I've made meringue, I've made the um, pavlova. So a couple of weeks ago I came in and did the meringue pavlova using our icing sugars, which is it's great for. But I thought, let's give it a go with the whipping it up as well and see whether we get the same, if not better, results using less products and the more convenient products as well because, again, we're not wasting the eggs. Um, so I am going to, one of the recipes that I'm going to do tonight is the pavlova again, but using the whipping it up. So it's a completely different recipe and I'm going to take you through the stages to see, to show you that you can still get um, a good result with the with the whipping it up. So we're going to show you that. Yep. So it's here. So here's one I prepared earlier. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be stuffed very shortly. Yeah. Some of it's already missing, which is why it's <laughs> chopped up like this. And um, so this I've used the sugar and crumbs whipping it up, 
and I've just added some strawberries in, into it just to give a bit of freshness in there as well. Um, so I'm going to be showing you how to make that. So that's one recipe that we're going to do it. And then the next recipe I'm going to be showing you is these free hands. But before I show you them, I'm just going to show you the flavours that we've yeah. got of the whipping it up because then I can move them out of the way. So the six flavours in the whipping it up range at the moment. So there's black cherry, salted caramel, which I'm going to be using tonight, raspberry ripple, strawberry milkshake, and, the, and you can tell what they all are by the colour combinations yeah. and on the new uh, nude. <laughs> on the new packaging as well they're going to have the same colour branding they're just yeah. going to have a, a new different outlook on yeah. the front yeah. Um, yeah. and then we've got the velvet vanilla which is the one that's been the most popular yeah. and then we've also got the lemon drizzle which I'm going to be using tonight in the free hands yeah the velvet vanilla as somebody has just said there let me go back um, who's just said that so Joe Griffin said the coffee mousse is just yummy. Just to let you know, just in case you're looking for a coffee flavour, there is no coffee flavour. You make the mousse with the velvet vanilla and then you add coffee to it. Um, Karen made it, so we can. I'm going to get Karen to put some things on the website tomorrow as well. Um, the black cherry, thanks Karen, loves the black cherry. So many of you have used it, before, used it and it's lovely. Um, Paula Brown, just to tell you, the big bags of velvet vanilla will be back in stock next week. We don't have to go through velvet vanilla. <laughs> <laughs> so both flavours, just just as icing sugars, I'm whipping it up sells out really fast. And then um, and then Mary Bowden says, what can you use any leftover made up Swiss meringue mix in? Save it. Just keep it in the fridge for a couple of weeks, Mary. Yeah, until you do doing something else. Yeah, right. Okay, more. so the next recipe that we're going to be doing tonight is the free hands. Now, free hands is a. Um, Traditionally, it's made in New Zealand and in Australia you find it, but it is related to a, a slightly different cake called the French financier. <laughs> I'm not very good at French. Um, but it's basically an almond cake. It's very light and airy. Um, it tastes delicious. And the great thing about it is you're just making the cake. You don't need to add anything else to it. Um, I've done it here in cupcake cases because traditionally you would use a freehand tin which I'm going to use tonight but if you haven't got one of these then you can do the same recipe just as easy in your cupcake cases. Well, you could do it in cases but you could just do it in a cupcake Yeah tin. you could yeah. And you can make it as a loaf as well. Yes yeah you can yeah. yeah. So I've just got some here um, I've took one out so you can see um, it here it with the fruit in. Yeah. So it's, it's very it's light very moist and they are very light and moist. John and loves sliced, them. sliced open as well. There. And the kids absolutely love these as well. So the flavour that I've used here is the lemon whipping it up. And I'm going to use that tonight. And I've just added blueberries and raspberries. Some have just got blueberries, some have just got raspberries. But you can add fruit and you can add nuts to them. Um, you can eat them hot or cold. And once you've made them, they last for a week in an airtight container. Right, let me answer a couple of questions. Lynn, 100 spatulas went into stock yesterday, so you can grab those. Um, and who else? Um, Kathy Eaton says she made your roulade, Laura, from last time. It was delicious. And she's so forward to making it with the whipping it up as well. Yeah, so I did, um, after the, I did the roulade a couple of weeks ago, I have been back on the, on the group page and had a look. And it's been great to see that you're enjoying the recipe and that you are making it. Um, it does. It does actually make me feel really good when I see that you've, you know, enjoyed the life and then you've gone on to make it and enjoy it. So it, it is good to see. It is and nice when like people do it. make the things, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Definitely. Karen liked it. I like it when I make something and they follow it. And Karen does as well. It shows that it's well worth the lives doing, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, Yeah. Well, well worth me getting lost to get here. Yeah. <laughs> so if you wonder why Holly's not saying anything, she just pokes me. She <laughs> She keeps... spatulas are coming in. No, you don't know when the no. spatulas are coming in, no, that's right. Holly's going to do the easy questions. <laughs> so she pokes me to say, Grandma, look at this. <laughs> Can you add melted chocolate into it? Into which one? The roulade or the free hands? I think the free hands. Didn't it say? <laughs> I missed that question. <laughs> I think the, the only thing with adding melted chocolate to it, because it's such a light and airy cake, adding melted chocolate might just make it a little bit heavy. 
So if you wanted to have a bit of chocolate on it, I'd probably do it afterwards once drizzle you've baked it, it and just drizzle yeah. a little bit of melted chocolate over That would be top. nice over it. It'd be nice yeah. over the free hands and over the roulade, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. So to be honest, because like with any live, I always make it beforehand and the amount of stuff that I've had this week is just <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> and we've, we've had all sorts, haven't we? We've made some of the, um, the, the marshmallow fluff with the whipping it up as well and that, that's not lasted. So we've had a bit of everything. Can we just say hello to your niece, Robin? Yeah. So Holly's really give, pleased. Give her a shout out, didn't we? So it's nice to see you, Robin, that you found the page. <laughs> she was struggling last time. Can you say hello, Holly? Hi, Robin. <laughs> so if you're just wondering, this is um, this is Holly's cousin. She couldn't find us last time. So Holly's cousin, Robin, is watching with her mummy, Lu um, Lucy. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to get started. So the oven is already on. So for the, I'm going to start with the free hands, and they go in at a temperature of 180 degrees. So I've already put the oven on for that. So we're going to get started. So as I said, I'm going to be using the lemon drizzle. So the first thing we need to do is just measure out 250 grams. Lots of people are saying they made your roulade lovely, uh, lovely, Laura. So uh, Maureen said she made a co coconut and pineapple one. Um, and then Wendy's made a black cherry Swiss, Swiss roll mousse. Um, let's see. Anna has used the whipping it up, the strawberry milkshake one today and said it didn't last long. It's lovely to see that you're all using it as well. Yeah. And as, as I said before, both these recipes I have already done with the icing sugars, but we're just showing you how to use the whipping it up yeah. um, differently. Um, some recipes will be different completely that we haven't done before, and some will be recipes that we that we have done. Yeah. But you've then got the option, if you wanted to make a roulade and you haven't got any eggs, you've got this product that you can just take straight out of the cupboard. Yeah. And go with. It. And can I just mention a few things? When you're using this product, you must have a spotlessly clean bowl and a spotlessly clean whisk. Um, it is a meringue based product, so it's very important that you have that. If you have anything that ruins the meringue, so if your bowl is, isn't grease free and, you, and your whisk isn't, um, it may not work. So everything has to be spotlessly clean. So I've put 250 grams of the lemon drizzle, whipping it up in here, and to that we're just going to add in 150 ml of tepid water, which is just room temperature water. Um, so you just get it, you can just take it straight out of the tap and then just leave it on the side for, I don't know, 10 minutes before you need it and it's room temperature. So I'm just going to add that into there and I'm just going to start whipping it up as it says on the packet. So Simon's very quiet tonight, isn't he? Yes. Well done. No, I'm, I don't, no I don't, one's speaking to you, no, Simon. No, I don't need to say anything, do I? There's when too many other... I didn't want to... Three like. women in the room. When there's three staffers in the room, that's when there's trouble. Struggle to get a word in, yeah. Simon. Okay, so I'm just letting it combine with the water a little bit, and then... I'm just going to switch it off while we scrape down the sides so we can make sure it's all getting combined. So as I said before, all of the whipping it up flavours are white in colour. So if you was making meringues or pavlova or roulade, you can colour it if you wish to. So Louisa Paris is saying she made the roulade. Now this is a typical thing where it's gone wrong. So she made the roulade, but it has a large crack and a bit to the filling and it was syrupy. So what she done there, she's not whipped up enough, has she? Yeah, so I just needed a little bit more whipping, whip, whipping so it, so it, it needs to be like quite a, a firm, I get so tongue-tied on this, it needs to be quite um, a firm heat that you whip it up to. So, um, but also, like, so, just so far all of you have been making roulade with the flavoured icing sugars. So when Laura was here last week, a couple of weeks ago, she showed you how to make roulade with the flavoured icing sugars, so you had to add your own egg. This time you don't need to add your own egg, and that's what she's going to show you the difference. Yeah. So go on then, why do you think it was so okay? Because um, if it's been left out in a pretty warm temperature as well, once you've, once you've made the roulade and then you leave it sat out on the side, that can make it syrupy. Um, sugar in the meringue starts to, starts to 
go to our local form really. So, I mean, we're not having as much luck with the weather now, are we? <laughs> but a couple of weeks ago when it was really nice and hot, that can, that can make it quite tricky. And also, if you've had something in your bowl as well, like you said, not having a, you know, a little bit of oil or a little bit of something still in your bowl, that can sometimes... And Needham, yeah, Needham's yeah. told me to remind you, you're not to put any hot trays on my pink board. No, well, check me out because <laughs> I've already yeah. made a... Um, so just so we don't have to wait 15 minutes for the cooling or any. Oh, you brought that out too soon, Laura. <laughs> I've already got the tray. That, <laughs> now you can't say well, here's what I made <laughs> earlier. <laughs> Just room temperature. Just room temperature. Not cold. Okay, so while we're waiting for that bit, it's gonna I put it on quite high, so it's on eight at the moment, and it needs to whip for approximately six minutes, so we'll, we'll check it in a couple of minutes, but in the meantime we're just gonna get the other ingredients ready. So as I said before, I'm gonna use the free hand tin tonight. Um, but if you haven't got one of these, you can just use your normal cupcake tin. You can use paper cases or you can use your cake release. So I'm just going to give... Simon's you saving himself for Saturday. Yes, that's very true. Oh yeah, let's we'll get one in that cover down there. Yeah. Just spray it first, Laura, for the sink. Laura, yeah. quick recap on what's in the bowl. It's 250 grams of lemon drizzle whipping oil and 150 ml of fusion and water. Right, so there's nothing else in at the moment. No, yeah, there's nothing else. I can't get anything in the Alright, well you know what, there's a there's a one in there. Um, you have to use one with a brush. This one? Yeah. If you put that into a bowl, so grab a bowl. And a brush. So you need to go to the drawers for the brush. Sorry, right, we'll be a minute. Technical error. As you can see there, it's just running, running away. Turn that back off. So you have to tell me if you can't hear me, Simon. Well, Holly. You can't hear me. Okay. So all, all I'm going to do, <laughs> all I'm going to do is I'm just um, going to use some tape release to fill the tin. This is just take the leaf with a brush. Thank you everyone for liking and sharing. So tonight what we're going to do is we're going to give away six bags of whipping it up for liking and sharing. And um, we do our draw every Friday now, we don't do them on the live. So we'll be doing our draws tomorrow morning at half past eleven when we're in with Karen. And I can't remember what Karen's making, but she's making something with whipping it up as well. So we'll do all last week's live draws tomorrow morning. Geraldine, I understand that it's a shame the whipping it up is not vegan, but it is eggs and that there's not much more I can do with that. I am going to try it with the powdered, um, is that, did you say agar agar? What is it? Um, yeah, agar agar. Yeah. I am going to try it with that, but I've just need time yet. Sorry about the noise from the mixer, it will be done very soon. Good job we've all got big mouths. <laughs> it's 500 grams. 
So there's 500 grams in a bag yep. and there's 250 grams in, in, the, mixer. in the mixer at the moment. Yeah, that's right. Along with 150 millilitres of water. Of water, water. Room temperature water, yes. Geraldine, if you want it subtitled, let me just write it, you need to turn the volume down. Then the subtitles will come up. I'll write it now. Nearly stopped okay. fitting. Getting there. Right, last one. <laughs> okay, so we've got all that free. I'm just going to pop that over there. This. That's the only thing, you have to have the mixer on, don't you? Can we get a quieter mixer? <laughs> They're all noisy. So it's it's at stiff peaks at the moment, but I'm just gonna take it a little bit a little bit more. Do you want to take the whisk off so they can see what you mean by stiff peaks at the moment? Yeah. Just show so, it under the camera. So stiff peaks just means that it's not falling off your off your whisk. So you're under that so camera can, there. Which camera do you want to be on? This one. Yeah. Okay. Above. So they can see. You can see. So that where it stopped stops whisking that's my other my other bit there so that's stiff peaks let's put this on without getting covered so i'm just going to keep it on just to whip a little bit longer so i'm just going to take it a little bit past because the whippier it is the lighter and area the cake okay so the rest of the ingredients i've got a big bowl clean big bowl here and we're going to add our dry ingredients to that. So we need to add 100, 100 grams of plain flour. So we've got plain flour back in stock, self raising is in stock, and yeast is in stock. I don't. The free hand tins, there's no supplier in the UK that actually provides them. I have looked everywhere, so I can't sell them. But if you go onto Amazon and um, put in free hand, you'll, buy them, you'll be able to buy them off Amazon. And it's called free hands, spelled exactly the same as friend, but instead of an E, swap it for an A. Free hand. Yeah. <laughs> Just call them friends. Can you check them out? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's a <laughs> um, Okay, so 100 grams of flour in there. I'm going to put that in the big bowl. Oh, there's a risky one. Next time, tip the bowl over Simon's head to prove it. Oh, yeah. Gosh, Simon, what have you done you? today? Hey, you well, I don't think you deserve that. Too quiet. <laughs> Who said that? Because you haven't said anything. Because you're too quiet. I'm trying to wake you up. <laughs> oh, it's Kevin <Karen> Naylor. <laughs> <laughs> And then we're going to add to that 125 grams of our ground almonds. The ground almonds, you can buy in any supermarket, normally where the fruits and fruit and nuts are. If they're not there, then there's normally some on the baking aisle as well, yeah. near the flowers. You're doing that slowly, for them. Um, just let me tell you about shipping, because somebody's asked. Shipping will not be back to normal for a long time. Until the social distancing rules are, are gone, Shipping is always going to be difficult. It's not that we can't do the orders. The difficulty is spreading ourselves around the warehouse and then with the couriers. That is what the problem is at the moment. So shipping, we are we are picking and packing as fast as we can, but it's very, very difficult. Okay, so 100 grams of plain flour, 125 grams of the ground almonds. You just want to give that a mix to combine up. Oh, somebody says Asda sells the tins. I'm surprised that Asda sells them. I'm actually amazed that Asda sells them. They don't. Free am tins. <laughs> Freaking amazed at that friend one. Tins. Hey? It's probably got some friend tins. Yeah. You never know. I was looking for, when I was making the sourdough bread, I wanted, um, Ryan, my brother, told me to get a banner, banner top to prove your bread. Yeah. And, um, I looked all over Amazon, couldn't find one that was in stock, and then they were in Sainsbury's. She's looking at them, and me. Is the recipe on the website? No, the recipe for this is not on 
not on the website, but I will get it on tonight. After this live, I'll write it down off Laura and then I'll get it on. Yeah, I'm very bit on a post it now. Yeah. Okay. Can you over whip the whipping it up? Yeah, you, you, you can pretty much just keep going for, for a while. For, it just it gets to a point where it gets to stiff peaks and it doesn't it doesn't go back you know it just yeah it just so stays the same you can't over whip can't it over no, whip that's it. what no. she said no. went, yeah so she said can you over whip no 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 you can't over whip well it. to be fair we want to know what you're doing if you've over whipped it that means you've run off and left the machine well i i'm guilty of this because whenever i am doing something at home there's always somebody that comes in and goes can you just do this can you just do that can you help me with this can you do that and i always end up walking away apart from if it's fudge or marshmallow then i'm stuck like glow to what i'm doing but anything else i'm always getting interrupted and when i made this yesterday i did just leave it whipping and whipping and whipping i don't know how long it was on for but it was a, it was probably about 15 20 minutes but it just stays the same which is really good as well okay so just keep going I'm just back checking over. Asda's website to see if they sell them. So I'm just going to go, go back just, just to make sure everybody's clear. So there's 250 grams of the whipping it up in the mixing bowl with 150 ml of te room temperature water. And then we've whipped that um, up to stiff peaks. We've got 100 grams of plain flour in the mixing bowl and 125 grams of the ground almonds. So next we're going to add in... I think somebody's misunderstood oh, what we've said. I think they think I mean a baking tin, but no, we mean a freehand tin. Yeah. It's not a muffin tin. And I'm just going through it. If they have one, I'd be amazed. I'm going to okay, run down so there and buy some more. We're going to... We, do you remember when your freehand tin went missing for a while? Yeah. That was at my house. Somebody <laughs> says that you can buy a freehand tin on Amazon. Yeah, I shouted that out before. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Were they not listening, Holly? Are they not here to listen? That said, go and find it on Amazon. Um, I can't find a free ant tin on Asda. To be fair, I've looked for free ant tins for years, ever since Laura made them the first time, and I've only ever been able to buy them off, Asda, off Amazon. Okay, so now that we've whipped up the whipping it up, we're just going to fold it into the dry ingredients. And we're just going to fold it like this, so that we're not... flattening the whipping it up. Your niece is in awe of you, Laura. You learn a lot from me, Robin, I told you. She's there. Uh, Auntie Laura's famous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the reason why I um, got your baking stuff last year so I can see what you make. We're just going to keep folding. We can get Robin baking lessons. Yeah, if you look on Amazon, the free Anton is £22.49, including the BAT. And you can get it on Prime Delivery, which means you can get, if you order it now, you can be making it. You can have it tomorrow. <laughs> can you use something else than almonds? Because somebody's got a nut out. You could, you could, but it's mainly substituting it for other nuts. Yeah. <laughs> um, not sure really what you could. I don't know. Could it's substitute because, for because the almonds is is helps it to give it the the lightness. You know, it's not it's not heavy it, when you get a bag when you get a bag of almonds. They're really they're really light, aren't they? Yeah. So i'm not actually too sure okay so once we've combined that we're going to add in 135 130 grams of melted butter so i've already weighed and measured that out here and pre-melted it karen karen's having a meltdown i'm gonna pour that in because i've told her she's doing the live tomorrow she said i thought you were doing it using the little rolly <laughs> <laughs> i'm doing a little rolly tomorrow i forgot karen's just reminded me so um, I'm going to show you how to use the little roller because some of you know what it is, some of you don't know what it is. So at half past 11 tomorrow, that's what I'm doing. And Karen's going to show you how to make the Swiss meringue buttercream. Um, so far, we've only had one person having a problem with it, but I really want to make sure that you all understand how to make it. Okay, so I've added in the melted butter and we're just going to, it does always look like it's 
split when you first put it in, don't worry about that. This is how it always looks. So we're just going to keep folding. And if you see any black bits in um, the mitts, it's just from the almonds. They always, ground almonds always get a little bit of, of the skin from the nuts. Simon, we must remember to get rid of squeaky chairs. <laughs> Is it salted or non-salted butter? Um, unsalted butter. Getting there, we're getting there. What flour did you use? So I've just used the plain plain flour. Okay, so the reason that we're not just you know giving it a good stir is that we're trying to not knock all the air out. We're trying to keep and maintain some air while we're still combining all the ingredients together. So when I stop in a minute, you'll see, you should be able to see some little air bubbles. And that shows that we have been able to maintain that air in there. And that's going to give it its lightness. I make. Okay, I'm happy with that now. I don't know whether you can pick up on the camera, but you can see a few little air bubbles popping up there. Okay, we'll just move that out of the way. And that, and we're going to bring back our tin. And we're just going to fill them up. Now the only thing with the with the free hands is that they don't rise a lot. So you do want to make sure that you've filled up each hole quite full so I'm just going to half fill them and then I'm going to add some fruit and then I'm going to go back over the top if you're wondering why I'm not filling them when I'm saying that you should and that's just because I want to get some fruit at the bottom as well Karen's now getting over a panic attack <laughs> she hasn't thought of anything to make <laughs> Yes, I hope you're all enjoying this live, everybody. If you miss, if there's anything that we've not told you, just ask the questions. I'll shout them out again for you. Um, but anybody who's just joined us, we've got a great, fabulous audience tonight. We're well over 200. And um, tonight we're making free hands with the Whipping It Up mix. This is so you don't have to buy eggs. And um, we're also making a roulade. Laura showed you how to make the roulade a few weeks ago with the flavoured icing sugars. And you have to um, buy your eggs in. Um, this way you don't have to. Oh, that's just enough blueberries. And you'll love them. You'll love the free hands. Okay, so I'm just putting, I mean you can put more fruit in if you want and like I say you can add nuts into these as well if you wanted to add some um, chopped nuts. I was thinking, Lily Grace has just said the same, I was about to say this to you. When the lady asked, could you swap it from the ground almonds, yeah. I was going to say, could you use coconut and then I got yeah. distracted. Yeah, you can but use there's a lady coconut. here who just said, could you use coconut. Yeah. But I, yeah, I would say give it a go with the coconut. I don't see there's with, any problem with, the, with that. With the ground coconut. Yeah, with the ground coconut. Yeah. You can buy that. You can buy I did that. actually make free hands once with the coconut one because I picked it up, think just, you know, when you just rush Yeah, it, I've got a bag in the kitchen. I've just, got a bag down there. And you just there. think that you picked up the right thing yeah. and then you get home and realise that you haven't. But I thought I'd give it a go anyway. Well, you know what? I'll get Karen on it tomorrow nice. with the coconut. <laughs> they are, Karen. Did you hear that? That's what you're doing tomorrow. You're making free hands with the coconut that I've got in the cupboard. <laughs> okay, so the recipe makes... Well, you can use frozen berries if you want to, or you can use fresh. No, oh no! No, don't use frozen berries. No, because they go soggy, don't yeah, they? Yeah, the, the frozen berries it adds too much water. Yeah. Into into Sorry. the mix. So when you, when you add when you add in, and I know this because I'm speaking from experience, because I made two batches of free ends, one with frozen fruit and one without, uh, with just normal fresh fruit, and the frozen ones they just sank right to the bottom and it developed a kind of crust on the top. So. Yes use fresh you don't have to, you don't have to put any fruit in if you don't want to either it's, yeah. it's, it's optional it tastes nice with both holly doesn't really like much fruit do you holly she likes these plain hence why i'm only putting one blueberry in each one <laughs> um, we haven't tried the macarons yet we've been playing with it 
but we haven't tried it yet. Basically, um, I'm not very good at making macarons. So <laughs> I, either, I either have... That's what I was thinking. Yeah. I, 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 I either do great macarons or I do rubbish ones. I can never get them right all the time. No. <laughs> okay, so I've added all the mitts in there now. So I've just put a blueberry at the bottom and a raspberry at the top. You can do it any way you want. You can just add blueberries, just add raspberries. I just thought with the lemon flavour, it'd be nice to have um, the freshness of the raspberry and the Somebody's just asking, could you put jam in instead of fruit? Yeah, I don't see why not. Yeah. It was like a thick jam. It needs to be a good quality jam so it didn't have like a high water content. Some of the you know layer squeezable ones are quite high in water, mm. so you wouldn't want to use that. But um, if you're using a good quality jam that's got fruit pieces in it, then then yeah, it should be fine. Yeah. So I'm gonna pop oh, them in it's the a proper oven. family night. My my cousins just popped up. Hi, Christine. <laughs> no, my cousins popped up. Holly. So I'm not just you. I'm gonna put family. these in the in the oven, and the <laughs> oven is set at 180 degrees. So we'll get them in there. How long for? Um, roughly 25 minutes. But it's until they're golden at the top. So I'm just gonna keep an eye. So they went in at seven minutes past. Have a little bit of a change around. Doing well with these glass bowls, no, I can't get them off the mixer. Doing well tonight. And we'll get started with the whipping it up. We lad. So we've got to go through all that noise again. Yep. <laughs> but I have made I have made the roulade so we don't have to wait for it to cook. <laughs> well, we still okay. have to wait for it to mix. We just have yeah. to wait for it to mix. <laughs> and then well, say, fine. Can't you just say, <laughs> let me get, let's chat when I've got started. <laughs> <laughs> We've got some time to waste. So, I'm going to be using the salted caramel, caramel whipping it up for the um, pavlova. Not pa no. No, really oh, loud. <laughs> Simon, stop talking. Oh, they are. Maureen says, <laughs> Maureen says, a wee chunk of rhubarb would be lush in a free hand. Yeah, you'd have to pre-cook it though, wouldn't you? You'd have to drain it well as well. Yeah. It's okay. just a very a, watery rhubarb. Yeah, it's anything that's rhubarb. got a high water content in it, it's going to be... Rhubarb, Laura, a hog. I love rhubarb, rhubarb and custard. So I'm, I'm four grams short. I like rhubarb, I just don't understand why you would have it in a, as a sweet thing. It's quite it's savoury. Really yeah. And, and it's not actually it's not actually fruit either. Oh well, no. It's and got no seeds, has it? No, no. no, no more fruit than celery. <laughs> Another debate. Yeah. Okay, right. so two hundred and fifty grams of salt. It's like tomatoes is in the veg section, isn't it? Whipping it up. But, but rhubarb's in the fruit section. Things with seeds. And then and fruit. to that we're gonna it add seed, again hundred and fifty ml of room temperature water. I put rhubarb in stir fry. She's got my scar on her. Yeah. That's not for mine. <laughs> so again, we're just going to let it combine slightly before we scrape down the sides. Do you know what, Elizabeth? You're absolutely right. <laughs> What? I'm just laughing. I said, "Ah, oh, Christine's watching. She's my cousin." Yeah. So Elizabeth just said, "Carol, if it's your cousin, she's called it Mark. She's called him Molly, but she said it's Holly's cousin, and she, she's right, isn't she? <laughs> she's a great, great cousin, isn't she? Yeah. She's my. Well, she's actually my great cousin. Your great, great cousin, and your great, great, great cousin. Well, I bet Christine will be up in a minute. <laughs> Feel really old." <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm nearly a mum to an, an adult. <laughs> I know, I'm an 18 year old. Mm -hmm. I know I don't look old enough. Yes, Laura provided me with my first grandchild is 18 in August and we can't believe it. I'm just hoping that the pubs are open. <laughs> <laughs> don't want to hang around with all the pubs. He has a few little sneaky ones, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so we're just going to leave that for whip again. And we need to grab another kit. And we've got some of these in it. What are you looking for? Okay, we'll have to do that. I'm going to have to do that. They're nice gold ones, that. Okay. I did a good one again. I don't know. Okay, so you need a rectangle. 
can go that way. So that Baking tray. Everybody knows that I'm taking good care of the pink board. <laughs> I've been wiping it. I can see that big knife right next to it and I'm a bit worried. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's because I'm always asking to chop everything and I never have a knife. Oh. Yeah, they do, aren't you? Then you don't look old enough to have a 17 year old Laura. Oh, With Jackie Adams, so her son's 25 on Saturday, and she's celebrating by doing our cupcake bouquet class. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got our rectangle baking tray. So we're just going to take a little bit of butter, and you just need to grease the bottom. And this just helps you when you when you really take meringue off later, just to help it release from the tin. Oh, There was quite a lot of comments from Lucy. Uh, it's not Lucy. Robin. Robin. You must take out, Kathy says, you must take after your mum, because she always thinks I don't look old enough. It's all 38 this month, aren't we? Yep. Yeah. And I've got ten, a 40 year old. 10 days. 10 days, you're 38. Yeah. Eight. I 20 there, Laura. No. So we just need to just need to wait wait for that. So I'm just going to show you again what it is that we're actually making. This is what we're making now. This is the meringue rhubarb using the, the whipping it up. So again, this is another light dessert that you can eat any time. But um, shame to say, I ate nearly a full one. <laughs> I think John could eat the only apple one. I wouldn't be ashamed to say I, it, Laura. Yeah. It, so the, the, the difference between the two, so having made the meringue roulade a couple of weeks ago and having made the one with the whipping it up, is one, I didn't have to worry about having any eggs in or whether they were fresh, um, which meant that Holly could have pancakes. There's no waste because I'm not leaving the oats anywhere and you only use the egg white. Um, but the other thing is that I um, convenient for it. it's convenient, but also the difference in the actual tasting was with this one, so you do get a little bit more of a crunchy meringue. So it cooks exactly the same time, the same way, but you're just getting a slightly, you're still getting the soft centre piece, you get like a little bit more of a crunchier outside, which I actually really enjoy them. On um, Sunday when I made one, I served half and then the next morning I ate the other half all to myself. I just couldn't stop. Uh, no, Laura, Holly, you, you're 11 days away. 11. Um, Laura's birthday is the 23rd of June. Somebody was just asking if it's, oh, Melanie was just asking if it's the 23rd. 23rd. So, Laura is a twin. I have a, I have a other sister in Australia. She left her sister. Yeah. She abandoned us. <laughs> Oh well. Okay, so we're just waiting. So again, with this, it's about six to eight minutes to whip it, and we're looking to get those um, six sheets as well. So for the filling, we're going to be using some cream, which I'm going to make next. Um, we're going to use the salted caramel icing sugar for the flavouring for the cream.
Michelle's had a, had a baby either side of your birthday. One on the 18th and one on the 22nd. Oh, before your birthday. Yeah. So we're getting there. We're, we're, we're at stiff peak, but again, um, with, this, with the Wicked Noodle product, I just like to take it a little bit beyond when it reaches stiff peak. So I'll just give it another minute. So you're going to need a spatula and a palette knife. I feel like I'm being very tidy and clean. You're looking very tidy and clean, Laura. Like okay. There we go. So I'll just show you again. Stiff peaks. Simon? <laughs> <laughs> Did, you? Did, you, did he have it on the right camera? Is that the bowl I'm going to wear? <laughs> yeah, do you have it? I was just it? about to throw it did out. You have it, it on was the right like, camera? which camera shall I put it it's on? It's on the front one. Yeah. <laughs> Go on, so let's see then, Laura. Let's so, get a bit, so can you get a big blob of it on there? So can, you can tip that bowl over your head, can you? It won't fall out. Do you want me to, I imagine you want me to show you? I thought Karen did that the other week, didn't she? Hey? I, think, I think she did flip yeah. the bowl upside down. She was scared though, putting it over her head. <laughs> <laughs> you going to do yours? No, I'm just washing my hands. <laughs> okay, so let's see if we can get this off. Yeah. Well, if you just pick it all up on the spoon and try and chop it off the spoon. Can you add nuts to the mix before cooking? So they can see it, Laura. Oh, sorry. I'm like showing them. So turn the bowl upside down over the over yeah. where you're gonna tip it anyway. Yeah, that's it. Yay! Pretty good. Front tight as I had the bowl that. Can you add nuts to the mix before you cook it? Oh I, I wouldn't do, no. I, just, I think meringue is so temperamental, yeah. you need you need to just make your meringue and then add add things if to you your wanted cream. To, if you wanted yeah, I would agree with Laura. If you wanted to add nuts and things like that, I would add it to your fresh cream. Yeah. Laura's just gonna flavour the fresh cream with um salted caramel, but like with that you could put in little um chocolate buttons or you could put in those little uh, fudge pieces if you wanted to. So I would add it to the cream, not to the um not to the meringue. Yeah. yeah. You don't you don't want anything going wrong with your meringue. No. Okay, so we'll you want your meringue to puff up and it's very light. So so we're going to put the roulade in the oven on 170. So when our free hands are nearly done, I can put this one in. So you're just going to spread it all out evenly, right up until the sides. And then by accident, when I made this one, I, um, I spread it out a different way and it actually helps you to give a, to serve a portion because you know, you've got the lines in it mm. you can do like a a neater a neater slice but if you're eating the whole thing it doesn't matter does it no <laughs> we're going to do the baby hedgehogs next week jackie you mean just serving it up to yourself as it was one yeah, portion i i ate time and i ate so much at the weekend in fact i could do baby hedgehogs on monday well, have you, have you, did you meet Richard, our hedgehog? I met Rebecca. You saw Rebecca. Ago. Did you not meet Richard, Laura? I didn't meet Richard. Oh, you've got to watch Richard, Richard. Anyhow, we're going to make the babies. The babies coming. So I think we'll make the babies on Monday. Okay, so that's it. That's our roulade. So then we're just going to put that in the oven on 170 for about 15 minutes. So I'll just check in our Good. Right, okay. do you want to move some stuff out? Oh, you've got to use the bowls again, haven't you? I've got to, I've got one more bowl here for my yeah. cream. So I'll just move that one there. Okay, so here's one I prepared so just earlier. To let, just to let Robin know, we don't actually have a hedgehog. We make it with cakes. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from that one over there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've got a souvenir hedgehog off one of our guests. Serena sent it in for us, so that's our mascot. Okay, so here's one. So after 15 minutes, when you take it out of the oven, it'll be um, 
higher than this so what happens during the cooling time is it it does sink down a little bit and that's completely normal so this is what it'll look like after the 15 minutes of it cooling once it's been baked Sorry, Mom. so it doesn't matter if you leave it an hour or more. no well i made this one when i got here today so that's probably been there for well, you got here at seven o'clock it's probably been there for an hour and a half hasn't it yeah so the recipes, the recipes for everything that we do is on the recipe website. So you can just go to Google, go to Google, put sugar and crumbs recipe, and it'll take you through to our website, which is sugarandcrumbsmixingitup.co.uk. You can write com if you want to. If you're looking for any of the whipping it up recipes, in once you get to the recipe website, write in the words whipping it up. Now the roulade is on there for the flavored icing sugars. But it's not on there for the whipping it up version yet. But it will be. But it will be. So again, that recipe site is on the back of all our packaging here. So you'll see it there. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to make some cream filling. And we're going to flavour the cream. So I'm just going to get that ready. So it's 300 ml. of double cream i'm just going to measure this out because i have actually already used some and again as i was saying last time if you over whip your cream to bring it back to life just add another little bit of cream so just add a tablespoon at a time until it comes back they want to know if you remembered the way uh, I we did, did. <laughs> i did make a phone call <laughs> because I wasn't sure, I did get a bit I nervous again. I can't believe again. you have to phone me to get the way to get I've in. I've never actually drove myself all the way here correctly. And I don't know how long you've lived here. You've not used a sat-nav on your phone. Yeah, car. but my sat-nav doesn't see the roads, it doesn't it sense it. it just, it's got it the just new goes, road, hasn't it? It goes off, it doesn't see the new road, so it just goes off. And then I'm like, ah, where do I go? So we're going to do whip up the cream. So I've took another piece of paper here and we're going to flip our meringue onto here so that we can roll it up. So, so Michelle Walsh is saying, in. oh my God, Carol, I used the icing sugar and the cream and you're right, it was a game changer. Because I was having a conversation with Michelle, I do not like fresh cream. Okay, but I do love it when you add a couple of spoonfuls of the flavoured icing sugar. So you weigh your icing sugar. How much icing sugar have you weighed? Um, 50 grams. Yeah, I just put a couple of um, tablespoons in. in. When yeah. I'm at home, I do, but for the purposes of this, this is I don't weigh anything really when I'm at home. I just chuck it all in. But when I just want to make sure that you all know yeah. what to roughly use. And then, Lynn, you were asking, is the glass bowl a, bowl a good investor? Well, I've got to be honest, I bought a glass bowl for every one of the um, KitchenAids that I've got. I love them, but they are a pain in the bum to get on the machine and to get off. Yeah, I find them really difficult to get on and off. And my worry is dropping it. Yeah. And I would agree, June Barrett's just, Barrett's just saying the same. She's fan. got a glass bowl and wish she had a stainless steel one as it's so heavy. And you're right, Lynn, the mix is very heavy as well. It is. As Holly, for her schoolwork, had to make a three-course meal this week for her parents to thank, thank us for doing the, um, the schoolwork um, for homeschooling. And she made a cheesecake yesterday. Well, she got my mixer out of the... I keep it in a cupboard under my oven. And she got it out, and then she got it to me, and the top bit flipped open, and she was like... I was like, Holly, if you drop that mitzer, you're gone. You're going to be in big trouble. <laughs> but um, luckily, I managed to get it off her in time. Okay, so the cream is whipped. And to be fair, John doesn't like cream as well, but a few months ago, I did it with the blueberry, and oh my God, he couldn't, he couldn't stop eating the bowl. Yeah, it, do, it does make a massive difference. And you, and you don't, like you say, you can just add a tablespoon. You can do, you can add whatever you want really. Well, Holly, Holly loves it in milkshakes, doesn't she, as well? Yeah. Holly likes the milkshakes. Holly, you, every time I go and get an icing sugar packet, it's already some missing. <laughs> so uh, normally that's Holly. 
So how much have you sprinkled on there? Or have you just used? I'm just, just using. I'm just at the end of the bag, so that's all gone. So I'm just, I'm just, I just want to give it a nice covering. What size tin is it? This. Measurement. Um, thirty-eight by twenty-five by seventeen. What? What? How can that be? Oh, that's the obviously the depth from the side, isn't it? 1.7. Can I just answer Claire? So it's 38 by 25. Yeah. So Claire, can I just answer your question just before Laura does any more? Just a minute. When you're making the Swiss meringue buttercream, you must um, you must whisk it up to a meringue peak, okay? And then you must have your butter at room temperature and you add it slowly. Simon came up with a great idea as well. If you've got two bowls and both Karen and I like this idea, whip up the butter and then put a teaspoon in at a time, whip it up until it's light and fluffy. It will curdle, it definitely does curdle, okay? But you've got to keep going, it's for about eight minutes and it will all come back to itself. Do you need a, a stand? I'm just gonna, no, leave it there and I'll put them there and then I'll show them right, in okay. a minute after we've done this. Because I'll burn my hands again. Yeah. I'm just gonna leave them there. Yeah. Okay, so I've just reduced the temperature of the oven and I'm just going to put the meringue in. So because it's still at, was at a higher temperature, I'm just going to give it a couple of minutes less. Okay, so in here we've got 300 ml of double cream that we've whipped. Before it's got to the actual whipping stage that I want it to, you have to add your icing sugar, otherwise you're going to whip it to the stage that you want it to, to get the thickness, and then add in your sugar and it's going to go too thick, and then you're going to um, need to add more cream. So you need to do add the icing sugar just after it started to get a little bit whipped. So that's ready there. So I've just sprinkled the rest of my icing sugar. I would just normally sieve a good coating onto that paper there. Now this has been sat here for about an hour and a half. So hopefully, fingers crossed, you won't have any problems when I flip it. Through these bowls. So you ready for the flip, Simon? Mm -hmm. Can they see the flip? I just want to make sure they can see it before you go. Can they see it, Simon? Quick, before I drop it. Go on, just do it. It's making me nervous now. There you go. Hope you got it. You just want to peel it off carefully. Yeah, so Claire, do keep beating it. Do not worry. It will come back together. It definitely curdles before it goes right. So I don't know whether you can see it, I have got a little break in there. Your head's under the camera. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I have got a little break in there, but it doesn't really matter with this roulade because when I roll it up, you're not really gonna notice it. But that is probably because I've left it. This kitchen is red hot and I've left it there for quite some sorry, time. Sorry, I just put the heating on. Why? Because I'm freaking cold. <laughs> I the heating on. I'm Do you not freezing. Feel, feel it getting hotter and hotter by the second time? I just thought it was because you had the oven on. No, I was in here before. I was, uh, I was freezing. Okay. I've not had my heating on since March. If you take the whisk off and tap it, it taps all, all of it off. It saves you messing around. Well, normally I just save it to lick it. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have any waste, don't worry. <laughs> okay, so we're just going to spread out the cream. Here. So if, if I was making this at home, I would, as soon as it's cooled down, I would get the cream on and get it rolled up and put it in the fridge. And then that way you're definitely not going to have any problems with like heat in the kitchen or anything like that. So and Laura, once you've rolled this up, can you freeze it or just refrigerate it? Um, refrigerate it if you're going to use it. The day that you're making it or the day after if you don't want to use it in a week then you can freeze it you just need to take it out of the freezer three hours before you're going to eat it and i'll tell you what to do with it to wrap it up ready so michelle's saying carol you're never freezing you're absolutely right michelle i never am but i have days where I'm, i am <laughs> my temperature is all over the place you were always freezing at my old house i know I'm either cold or I'm red hot. I'm like that though, really. But you know when I'm red, when I'm, I'm when always I'm, red hot when Mum's cold. Yeah, 
when I'm red hot, I, I have all I have all the doors open and these lot are frozen to death. Okay, so I'm just gonna add a few strawberries because I need to. You pull that gold tray to like two inches, you know, the gold. So I've just got some fresh strawberries. So depending on the flavour that you was using it would depend on which fruit you wanted to use. So I've used the salted caramel, well, which I wasn't really sure what fruit to use. You be careful it, chopping on my board. Oh, sorry. <laughs> We're not allowed to chop on it. What's the pink board for? <laughs> <laughs> it's for looking at and stroking. Yeah, and wiping. <laughs> Making sure it's clean. It's actually for sugar crafting, so you can roll mm. out on it, and you can roll your sugar paste on it. It's a non-stick. It's a non-stick board for rolling out your sugar paste. But we put it there because we've got these glittery worktops, and if we just have the worktop showing, it reflects all the glitter. So then you can't say anything. So I'm getting in trouble again. <laughs> <laughs> they're spotting it. You're chopping spotting on the it. pink board. <laughs> look, there they are. They're, look, they're all. <laughs> Don't chop right? on it. There you go. They're, they're all aware. Don't chop on the board. Well, who chops on their pink board? Go on. I bet none of them board. do. How many people have got pink board? Yeah, well, there's quite a few of them got pink boards. Well, I haven't got a pink board. I just chop on what I'm using. <laughs> okay, so I've done quite thin slices because you are going to roll it up. You don't want to have like really chunky fruit. So if I was using um, blueberries or raspberries, I'd half them. So there's no pattern. Just put it on. Well, they're all, they're all there, know. looking after my board for me. There's no <laughs> other comments except from no <laughs> I'm chopping it, I'm going to do it again. You'll have to have a thing. I'm doing you... it again, I'm a rebel. <laughs> Who loves their pink board? <laughs> this is going to be like that hashtag. Who's got a pink board and strokes it and loves it and doesn't let anybody near it? Do you remember when I made scones and we had the hashtag jam first? Jam what first? Jam first is going to be the hashtag don't, don't ruin the pink board. <laughs> Every time I come here. Okay. Lisa, Lisa got hers today. She told her husband it's for best. Yeah, don't touch it. <laughs> See, look, they've all got the pink balls. Lynn Steer's got one. She loves it. <laughs> okay, so to roll up, you're going to use your paper. Up, We're rolling it up. We're rolling it rolling. up. Rolling. <laughs> so you're just going to use your paper to roll. So you want to get that first layer pressed down and then lift the paper and be quite firm with it so you get that nice roll over but all the time I'm just using the paper oh I like that hashtag board gate yeah <laughs> board next gate. time I come you'll all be like just take it away <laughs> not a chance don't let her use it somebody else has got one that arriving tomorrow they're excited Jackie's got hers on a wish list for Christmas yeah I I just chopped straight onto my um, worktop. My new Ryan will have a pink one in the oh kitchen, no. will he? Oh no. We're going mad. We're not, we're not having we're not having pink. So my split has look there, but we're not worried about it. And then we've just got some icing sugar there. So what we would do now, if I was gonna put that Do a new board? A new board. Right, Sam, do you want to grab a new board, Ramon? I'll grab it. Yeah. Right. They're going to know when I'm coming back because it's nearly good. I tell you, when you all get your red board, or when you all get your pink board, you're going to love it. Just to let me to tell you to look after your board. When it comes, it's got a light film of grease on it. That's how it's meant to be. And you're meant to keep it like that. So you wash it down with a warm soapy cloth, dry it off. And it'll stay like that for a long time. If you start to see the colour fade or anything like that, just get the treks out a little bit on your fingers and rub it in and massage your board. Okay. So if you're going to eat this today or tomorrow, I would just lift this up and put it on the board, which I'm going to do in a minute. If you wanted to freeze this, you would keep it on the paper, roll it up, back underneath all the way again, tuck in the sides, wrap it, in cling film very lightly and put it in your freezer preferably somewhere where somebody's not going to shove something in on top of it and then three hours before you want to eat it defrost it okay. yeah that's the point you need to remember whether it's, it's, it's a cake isn't it yeah yeah 
So we're going to, well actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop the ends off. That's funny. Lynn's, Lynn's hers is, she's received hers today and her husband can't understand what her excitement's about. So just to get a neat, a neat edge, I'm just going to take off the sides, which again, won't get wasted, don't worry. No, they won't. Nothing gets wasted, does no. it? No, no. We ate the ends earlier. <laughs> you could have this time then. It's got strawberries in it. Oh yeah. We've got strawberries in it. I did apologise. We can yeah. pull the strawberries out. Yeah. How much is it going to um, well, we've got we've got two sizes, but we've got a third one coming in. So we've got um, the big one is 110 pounds. That's the cheapest I can do it for. And the reason it's so expensive is is getting the pink lemon uh, melamine or whatever it's called, whatever the, whatever it is. Trying to get it in pink is very difficult, and it costs a fortune. And then I can't remember how much the medium one is, and I'm bringing in a small one. Yeah. The green boards that are not that are a bit smaller, that they are a lot cheaper if you want a green board. And I've got to be honest, I did love my green boards as well. I did treasure them equally as well. But it's pink for the Sugar and Crumbs kitchen. And I've had these specially made and exclusive for Sugar and Crumbs. So um, the guy who I buy them off has promised not to sell them to anybody else. Okay. So just chopped a slice there. So that cr that crack is making it unfold. So don't worry about if you the crack, are, Laura. I'm not worried to about me, it. To me, it looks like a slice. That looks like my portion there. So as I was saying about the way that I that I did it, that that's like your which side? You that slices in. Well, that's it. So that's oh, that's, mom, that's mom's side and that's ours. No, Holly's decided which side she's having. So as you can you can see there, if I just press on that lightly, how soft and light that is perfect for yeah. any occasion. I've got to be honest, when Laura was here last time, she made two. She took one home and left one with us. And um, I gave one to my son and John hadn't realized I'd given it away. He was devastated. Uh, that's hot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was cool don't then. burn the pink board, don't burn the pink board. I tell you, Laura, chopping the pink board, burning the pink board. When did you Literally. take them out? Hey? Before, when I said Before. I'll just pop them over here. Oh, okay. Yeah, Simon, come on, come on. That's a bit busy. <laughs> <laughs> you too, too busy doing something else. Um, so, I'm just going to grab a spoon so I can get one out, and hopefully. I've greased it well enough. Yeah. I'm going to go for this one. So the, these are nice served hot or cold. Yeah, they're delicious hot. I love them hot. They are fiddly little things to get out. Do you not just turn the tray over and bang it? No, I use no. the I use well, then the little, I'd have to bang it on the I use the little mini I? palette knife, Laura. Oh, you you you'd have to eat that one now. Yes, yeah. I'm willing to. Don't worry, <laughs> Simon. Don't worry about it. If you go in that drawer down there, there's a little mini palette knife. Okay, so. That's our well, there's loads of hashtags going ends. on. Hashtag protect the pink board. <laughs> Wait, hashtag don't let Laura back in the kitchen. <laughs> um, so we've got everything there now. Yeah. All that's left to do is eat them. Eat them? Yeah. So go and show me that one. Bring them the ones that you made round earlier. So you, can, you can see how hot this kitchen is because this is melting. Melting, yeah. I'm absolutely boiling. Open the door, Holly. These are the ones that I did earlier in the cupcake. Can you see them? Yeah, well That's done. It. Well done. Right. So do you want plenty to eat? Yeah. <laughs> so the recipe, Laura, so we've kept a good audience with us. We hope you liked and shared everything tonight. Karen and I are in the kitchen tomorrow at half past 11. Should I jump in here? What have you got in the oven there coming out? The... Oh, is it ready? So Karen and I are in the kitchen tomorrow at half past eleven. How much butter did you put in? In the three ends. There's no butter in anything, is there? Yeah, the three ends had 130 oh, grams of melted butter. Yeah. So oh that, yeah, I remember that. This is the, what the meringue will look like when it comes out of the oven. So it's 
risen, but it will go down as, as this one did. Now I don't know where to put it because it's red up. <laughs> <laughs> take it down put it in the cool oven, Laura. In the cool oven. Yeah. Good idea. Clear in the end. Well, the first slice of roulade is gone. It's in Holly's mouth. <sighs> Holly? You got it all around the face. I'll share it with her after. <laughs> right, okay then, Laura. Thanks very much. No so, yes, thanks everyone for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed Laura in the kitchen. I'm trying to get her here um, every other Thursday. So that's where we're aiming for, isn't it? So Laurie, as lots of you will know from many years ago, Laurie used to be a real regular in the kitchen, but then she had little baby Harrison and it all went. Harrison needs looking after him. She sent me the most amazing picture of him today of how he fell asleep on the settee and I'd love to share it with you. But he got no clothes on, so it's probably a best own, but it's just the most funniest position ever. Anyhow, I'm digressing. So um, the recipe for the free hands made with the flavoured icing sugars is on the website. The ones with the whipping it up and not on, I'll get them on tonight. And um, tomorrow, Karen and I are in the kitchen. I'm going to do a demonstration again with a little rolly to show you how to use it, because I still keep seeing it pop up in the group of people wanting to know how to use it and don't even know what it is. And I want to show you how fantastic that is. And Karen's going to go through the Swiss meringue buttercream with you as well. We're also going to do all the prizes tomorrow, and I'll also show you all the new products what's in as well. Um, you're going to see me, any of you that are in our classes, we've got lots of online classes. So tomorrow I'm going to spend the day um, popping up in every group to, do, to talk about that group. So I'm not going to say any times, but after the live tomorrow, I'm going to pop up in each of the group in each of the group classes just to introduce myself and talk about what's going on in that group for those of you who don't know about our online classes I just want you to just have a think about some of the things I'm going to tell you we brought in some tutors um, to do classes with us and basically you pay 60 pound to join the group and then every class that they do is yours for free so even though you've joined now if they've done a previous class so let's talk about Molly Robbins she did a previous class you can watch that class and then you can do her next class which is on the 24th of July and then when she does her next class so the tutors will do a class um, every um, four to six weeks providing the demand is there so as long as people keep joining and it makes it worthwhile for the tutors they'll keep coming and doing them I do a cupcake bouquet class which is brilliant there's a fantastic group going in there and my class is on the on Saturday so if you've not joined that you can still watch it and one of the things I do want to explain about the classes, we do it as a Facebook Live and you watch the live and it's an all day thing, but we do stop for breaks, we do stop for lunch. And even if you don't want to do it, just to sit and join in and watch is great fun as well. And lots of people do sit in and watch and then they do it at their own leisure at a later time. So don't feel that you can't watch if you're not participating. So it's a two way thing, you can do it with us, or you can do it, sit and watch and do it in your own time. You can go back and watch the past lives and you can watch any future lives that's going on. It's a great learning experience and every month I try to show you something different. And Holly, do you wanna get me those cupcakes out of the fridge, please? So like this week, I'll be showing all the newbies how to use the Russian piping tips, how to make peonies, how to use the 1M swirl. But the people who've been on the classes already, I'll be showing them how to make these. So I've got two flowers, but we're going to be making one of them on Saturday. So, um, so can you see the overhead there, Simon? So on Saturday, I'm going to be showing all the ladies who have been in the class already and bought their nozzles how to make the sunflower. So these are dahlias, by the way. So I think that's how you say it, dahlia. I say dahlia, dahlia. So, you know, I'll show you how to make these another time. But um, so the people who, are in, who have already been in the class before, because they've already done a class before, or they've done, a, or they've done both classes before, because some of them have been right at the beginning, just so that they're not learning the, the same thing all the time. Every month I'm trying to do something different. So I hope you're looking forward to learning to make those ladies. Let me get ladies. So I'll have a read of your comments as well afterwards because these are great fun to make. And so are these, but we'll do these another time. And it's like next month, we're gonna use the Karen Davies Hydrangea Mold. And um, we've used lots of different things in the Cupcake Bouquet class. So, because every month I want to show you something different. Um, in terms of tutors, we've got Molly Robbins in. She did the burger cake, uh, burger and fries cake. And the feedback from what that was, everybody was so scared about whether they could make it. 
and then the positivity afterwards is that they couldn't believe that they had made it and it was actually really very very easy and I've seen so so much of it it's just lovely to watch and um, Georgie Godbold is in doing her class on the 30th of June and um, the bundles are ready okay so you can buy those at once you're in the group and um, you, you don't have to buy the bundles I'm not one of those for forcing stuff on you can actually source your own materials so I have put a whole list there for what you need but I'll talk about those in each of the classes and then we've got Hector who's doing um, flexible paste flowers and you'll see Hector pop up on the community group and he makes these most amazing flowers with flexible paste but the flexible paste is a secret and uh, you only get that recipe once you've joined the group and um, his are pre-recorded pre lessons albeit he is going to do lives but they won't be working with the lives those will be watching because things have to set and be dry so you can't you can't actually do a full live with it but he will be doing demonstrations live there as well and um, if you do join Hector's classes the the main all uh, the main class with all the flowers on is is quite um, a big price to shell out in one go. So it's two hundred pounds. So what we've done is we've actually broken up all the flowers into different groups. But once you've bought your fourth flower, you can then go into the big group. Then so I think there's seven, eight, nine flowers that he's going to show you how to make in the big group, which is amazing. Um, and I think, oh, we've also got the Cake Illusionist who's joined us as well. So it's fabulous to have Anna, Anna on board. So it's been great response. She's actually here in the Sugar and Crumbs kitchen in October. Now what she's teaching in a live class when you come to a kitchen is not what she teaches on online. Um, the online, because that's what she does all over the world. So the online classes, you're gonna make fabulous stuff in there as well. And that's been very well received as well. So all of you have really liked the tutors who've joined us. So just remember, you're not paying per class, you pay 60 pound and that's it. You're in that particular group. So you pay 60 pound and you're in the cake illusionist group. You pay 60 pound and you're in Molly's group, but every live that goes on is yours. And you can watch it, play it back whenever you want join in and the community in those groups is amazing there'll be lots of ladies who's watching tonight and they'll tell you how fabulous it is and um, i've seen a lot of my team cupcake bouquetiers as we call them uh watching tonight are you all excited for saturday are you excited for saturday simon yes <laughs> <laughs> and um, the way that we do the camera angles on a saturday uh, uh, uh the way that we do the camera angles for a class is different from a live on a live we're sort of showing you and doing a demonstration and we're moving at a fast speed when we do the classes we do it at a very slow speed and we wait for everybody and we get time we have a bit of banter and you know what we want the experience to be as though you're in our kitchen and that's what you all feel and the good thing is you only see us we don't see you so therefore you can do it in your pajamas we don't care what your hair looks like or whether you've got any makeup on or not you just enjoy yourself making it at home so anyhow that's us over and done with so I just want to say a big thank you to Laura thanks Laura she'll come and say to try to you in a minute uh, thanks Simon as usual and thanks Holly and thank Holly's cousin if you've been wondering why there's been so many love hearts and likes, I think Holly's finger, cousin has not had her finger off the button. So, <laughs> <laughs> so thanks very much. And we will Is see you at half past 11. Yes, that's Robin. So, uh, <laughs> Come, you can press that. Which one? That one there. What are you doing? What are you doing? You can turn it off. It now. just says hi, Robin. Oh, right, hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, have you typed it up for her? <laughs> Oh, Robin will like that. Uh, so, what do you do? A pop up? Big shower. Yeah. So, thank you for joining us. And Karen and I will be in the kitchen at half past 11. So, I'll just give Laura a little run through this again. And then we're off. We'll see you in the morning. <laughs> just repeat what you made. Um, so, so, yeah. So, tonight we've done the whipping it up um, meringue roulade and the whipping it up free hands which as uh, mum said I'm going to leave her with the recipes for both and they will both be on the website by tomorrow yeah is that right no tonight tonight. 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 tonight if you yeah. if you're still up and you want to make something tonight they'll be there <laughs> <laughs> give me an hour but yeah yeah well once we've uh, made our way through a bit of this then she'll be on the computer doing yeah that, we're so. going to have a cup of tea and a piece of roulade first yeah. so. and if you want to see more of Laura you can see Laura and Harrison tomorrow Two o'clock. Oh, have we got a flashback oh, tomorrow? You're making chocolate orange crownies. Oh, 
right. Oh, was Harrison born then as well? But he's not very big. He's... <laughs> right, he's a baby, right, okay. No, because we've got Laura doing live through. So we do, if some of you may remember or not remember, but we do um, flashbacks at two o'clock, Mondays to Fridays. I, I was just thinking, why am I here tomorrow? Yeah, so, um, <laughs> and uh, you saw Laura all for her pregnancy with Harrison, and then um, and then up pops Harrison, we have him. But he's uh, he's free in September, so. Yeah, yeah, a few years ago now. Little rascal. But um, I just want to say thank you again for joining us tonight. I hope you have enjoyed these recipes and you do give them a go and I look forward to seeing them in the group as well yeah. if you want to share them so don't forget to like and share tonight's live and like and, sh like your, um, and share your own yep. share recipes them in the group. as well because yeah. we'd love to see them so thank you very much for joining us bye and goodbye bye bye Holly bye Simon bye bye, bye. bye. <laughs>